Hi everyone, this is Ravi. Welcome back to Postman Beginners Tutorial. This is our lesson 9 on Postman API Tool Concepts. So in my previous session, I've already explained you how can we use or how can we generate scripts very quickly by using snippets in Postman Tool. So this is a part 2 of our previous lesson. So I would recommend you guys to go through that video before you watch this session. So in this session, I'm going to cover the topics related to tests. That means how can we automate the test cases, API test cases by using Postman or how can we perform testing of API requests by using Postman and how can we use the module called tests in Postman. So please do subscribe to the channel, click on bell icon you will receive notifications whenever I publish more videos. Thank you. So in this lesson, I'm going to cover what are tests in Postman and how can we create tests at API request level and how can you create tests at collection level and also how can we create tests at folder level. And then I'm going to teach you how can we analyze the test results that you have automated. Okay, so now let's jump onto the system and see how can we perform all these actions by using Postman tool. Okay, so this is uh, my Postman tool. Okay, so if you remember in my previous session, I have explained you about your pre-request scripts. How do we create pre-request scripts by using snippets, right? So in this lesson, I'm going to concentrate on. So basically, we are going to use the same operations. The first operation, first service is get users list, which is going to get give me the entire list of users. Okay. In the same way, I'm going to use a single user request. That means this particular uh, this particular URL, this particular request brings you the details of user, single user, details of this single user. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna teach you. Let me just make sure that. Okay, so do one thing, let me do one thing. Okay, so let me send this and then you're gonna get the response here immediately. See, you got the response. That means I enter ID 3, then it's going to give me the details of user ID 3. Okay. So now in this lesson, I'm going to teach you about the tab called tests. In Postman, you have a tab called tests. Why do we use tests? The tests, the script, whatever you write under tests tab will be executing after the request has been executed. That means as soon as I send this request, the first request will be executed. I'm going to get the response and then your script in tests will be executed. That means if I want to validate the response, let's assume I want to validate whether the email ID is Michael or not. Right? Then I need to write the tests here so that as soon as I receive the response, it's going to validate the JSON paths or the status of your request, right? So all these sorts of things, basically, whatever the operations that you you want to perform after the response that you will be performing by using tests. Okay. So now let me, for this particular get users list, first test, I want to make sure that I want to test whether the response is the response code is 200 or not. As soon as I get the response, I want to validate the response code. Okay. For that, if you go down here, status code 200. So I can just click on here. So this one, what is going to do? It is validating if the status code, response status code is 200 or not. PM.test is a function test function and then pm.response 
it is looking for a status code 200. So let's send this. See now the request has been sent and if you see here the results, if you see the results, if you see the results here, let me see the results. Okay, I can see test result. My status code is passed. That means status code is 200. That's why the test is passed. My first test is passed. Now let's go and insert the second test. What is the second test I want to perform? I want to see if the response is less than 200 milliseconds or not. Add this and now send this and now you see I have another test case or another test where the response is less than 200 milliseconds. Let me make the response. I am expecting the response should be 20 milliseconds and see what happens. Send the request. If you see my response is below 20 milliseconds, which is wrong. That means my test is fail. My performance of the request is not less than or not less than or equal to 20 milliseconds. But if I make it as 200 milliseconds, yes, the response is less than 200 milliseconds. Okay, done. And let's assume, so let me explain one quick scenario here. Okay, so whenever I am sending a request, I'm getting a response. See, I'm getting response here. I want to store ID. I'm getting the ID of my first user. My first user ID is 7. I want to store this value and the same ID I would like to send in the subsequent request message which is for single user. Instead of hard coding this value, I want to send the ID from the response of my first API. How can we do that? So here in tests not only by using test module not only you can test but also you can create your global variables by using test how as soon as i get the response i want to store this value what i can do i can do one thing i can create a variable here where json data equal to pm dot response pm dot response pm postman dot response dot json means i'm creating a json path okay now i want to create a global variable pm dot globals dot set what variable i want to create id one is one global variable and here Whatever the JSON variable here, I want to use that. JSON data, whatever the variable I created here, right? And dot, what is that you want to capture? I want to capture this one, right? So now to know what is the JSON path, as I explained to you in my earlier sessions, open the JSON finder. And if you see here, the data is already there. This is my first ID element. What is the ID element? Data zero ID. So here I want to put that particular JSON from the response. I want to capture the particular ID, particular JSON element, right? JSON path. So I am setting a variable called ID one and I am storing the value of this one the JSON data response within that I'm taking only data zero ID, which is this one. Okay. So now if I go to environment variables, sorry, the global variables, let me go to global variables. You don't see ID one variable. Now, when I run this request now, first it's going to send the request and then it's going to get the response and it's going to validate the status code 200 and then it's going to validate the 
response within 200 milliseconds and then it's going to create id1 global variable and it's going to store the value now let's go back to in because i already executed go to environments globals now if you see id1 global variable is created and the value is 7 done now in get single user i want to instead of hard coding here i want to use the global variable see if you see here there is a global variable id1 right now if i send this it should send a global variable id of 7 you should get the response of 7 user right send it see you are getting the 7 user response now i want to validate whether i am getting the 7 as a response or not right see when i send this request i don't know what id has been sent i should get a response of id 7 whatever the id i captured here i should get the same response here correct so now how can we validate the json path so by using tests you can insert a new test called json value check this one and here the json value what is the value i want to take the json path copy this and paste it here take the json path so this is my json path and put the json path here done and send it now as soon as you send it now you can see the result you can see the result here okay let me see the result see the result is it says expected okay here what is the expected expected value i am expecting 7 right now send it see now your test is passed that means whatever the response i got is matching with the expected result now let's assume let's assume i want to capture the element of 2 that means which is 8 okay i want to capture for that i want to change it to 1 okay sorry I, i'll do one thing okay let me do one thing let me just copy this let me insert another let me create another variable variable called 2 and here in this time 1 data set 1 that means it's going to store 8 okay let me send this now so if we go to environments i should see a new variable called id2 and the value called 8 perfect and now go to single user now here instead of id1 i want to use id2 this time what is my expected result my id2 is 8 that means my expectation is it should the id whatever the response i'm going to get should be 8 right save this and then execute it see now let's see the result see that means my test is passed so i want to change this as id validation id response id validation in response right send this so now your id validation in response is pass right so this way now if i want to execute these two tests together right i can execute these two tests together so let me just say i want to just close all the tabs to avoid confusion okay so now i want to run these two tests together first what i am doing i am sending a request and then i am validating a get users list i am validating i am validating the response code 200 and the response is within the 200 milliseconds or not and then i am storing the id of user from the response i am storing that into a global variable and the same global variable i am using here and then I'm testing whether the response ID is pro correct or not in the second single user request message. 
Now I'm going to execute all these together. Run these two run collection. If you see here, my first get users list. First test case is pass. Second test is pass, right? And then your status code is 200. And what about the single user? The single user, see if you see, all the tests are passed. For the single user, I'm getting the correct ID response, right? So this way, you can easily automate your API request test cases to validate the response messages. So hope you all understand the difference between pre-request script, which I explained in my previous session, and your tests, right? Now, if I want to see, instead of defining all these tests, here, I can define all these tests at folder level as well. If you go to folders, you can find the tests here and then you can perform the same tests here at the folder level as well. And also you can define these tests at collection level as well. If you, this is my collection, under collection, I have these two folders, right? Which I created in, in my previous sessions. At collection level also, you can perform these validations. If you want to perform these validations, okay? At collection level, at folder level, at request level. Okay? Hope you all understand it's really, really very important concept because whenever you execute any API request, it is must to validate your response, whether the response validation is correct or not, whether the response is properly, I have received the response correctly or not. So that is your responsibility to validate, right? Hope you all understand the concept very well. I'm going to cover more uh, technical concepts in further videos. Stay tuned and Please do subscribe to the channel, click on bell icon, you'll receive notifications whenever I publish more videos. Thank you.